In this lecture on DNA replication or DNA synthesis, we're going to talk about some of the important enzymes that function to perform DNA replication. We're going to talk through the molecular events of DNA replication, particularly in the phases of initiation, elongation, and termination. And then we're going to talk about um, DNA replication varying on the leading and lagging strands. And so DNA replication has three steps, an initiation step or a start step, an elongation step or phase where the DNA is synthesized, and a termination phase where the whole process ends. And so we're going to first start by talking about what happens during initiation of replication or all of the events that get replication started. And so the first thing that has to happen in order for DNA replication to proceed is the two strands of the DNA double helix need to be unwound and they need to be separated from each other. So rather than being bonded together in this double helix, we want to separate one strand from the other. And there's a particular enzyme that is responsible for this unwinding and unzipping of the DNA. And that enzyme is called DNA helicase. This is the enzyme that unwinds and unzips or breaks those hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen bases of the DNA. And it allows both strands to be separated and then ultimately used as templates for DNA synthesis. But these strands have a tendency to want to come back together as soon as they're separated. And so in addition to the DNA helicase, there are certain proteins called single-stranded binding proteins that actually keep these two DNA strands separated from each other and prevent them from rewinding back into a double helix. And so if you want to see this process in motion, here's DNA helicase working to unwind that double helix and unzip that DNA to open up the origin of replication even further and create some replication forks. And then you can see here these single-stranded binding proteins all localizing along the DNA after helicase unwinds and unzips it to make sure that the two strands stay separated. And so as DNA helicase is unwinding and unzipping DNA, it actually ends up creating a tension or supercoiling of the DNA that's in front of it. And there's another enzyme that's there to kind of relieve some of the tension or supercoiling that's caused by DNA helicase unwinding and unzipping the DNA. This enzyme is called topoisomerase, and its job is to make small little cuts in the DNA, and that allows relief of some of the tension or twisting tension that causes, that is caused by DNA helicase. And then topoisomerase religates or reseals those cuts back together. And so here you can see kind of all of these players together at one replication fork. We have DNA helicase that's able to unwind and unzip the DNA. Slightly ahead of it is topoisomerase, relieving any tension caused by this unwinding and unzipping. And those single-stranded binding proteins, making sure the two separated strands stay separate. And there's one other player in here that we haven't talked about yet, but is absolutely essential to initiating DNA synthesis. And that's an enzyme in here in pink called DNA primase. And DNA primase's job is to make small stretches of RNA called RNA primers. And so here is DNA primase in orange, and here's one of those short stretches of RNA or RNA primers in green. And these short chains of RNA are important for two reasons. One of which is they provide a short piece or a short stretch of nucleotides that DNA polymerase can extend. And it does that by <laughs> adding nucleotides to this free three prime hydroxyl group. And so DNA polymerase or the enzyme that actually makes DNA or adds nucleotides to an existing piece is not able to do this process on its own. It can't just create DNA out of nothing. It needs to start 
from like a little bit of a piece or primer just to get everything started and then it can continue to add nucleotides to that. So this RNA primer is essential for DNA polymerase to function and be able to create new pieces of DNA. And so after primase creates an RNA primer, helicase has unwound and unzipped the two strands of DNA. Single-stranded binding proteins are keeping them separated. We now have a replication bubble available to us, or basically an area where replication can happen, where there's two single strands of DNA, nice and open, and accessible to the enzyme that will actually synthesize or make the DNA, which is called DNA polymerase. And these strands of DNA here <laughs> are used as a template for DNA polymerase. And DNA polymerase will basically read the template and then add a complementary nucleotide to the strand that is now growing. So if the template strand has an A and DNA polymerase reads an A or adenine nucleotide at that position, it will add the complementary T or thymine to the new piece of DNA. If there's a G in that template strand, DNA polymerase will see that G or guanine nucleotide and it will add a complementary C to the new strand. And it will continue doing this, adding complementary nucleotides to the growing strand of DNA. And as I mentioned before, DNA polymerase <coughs> can only add nucleotides to an existing piece of either RNA or DNA. And the reason for that is that DNA polymerase catalyzes a reaction that requires a free three prime OH group. And it's able to catalyze the formation of a bond between the phosphate group here in this nucleotide on the five prime carbon <coughs> with <coughs> the hydroxyl group on this nucleotide here attached to the three prime carbon. And so we tend to say that DNA polymerase makes DNA from five prime to three prime. It can only add nucleotides to this three prime end because this reaction is the only one that this enzyme can catalyze. And so all new nucleotides are added to the three prime end of a growing DNA chain. And so we know that DNA is made up of two antiparallel strands which means one strand is oriented five prime to three prime, but the other is opposite and it's oriented three prime to five prime. And if we need to use these two different facing strands or two antiparallel strands to make DNA, but the DNA polymerase enzyme only moves in one direction, we're going to have to solve this problem of how DNA polymerase can work to synthesize DNA from templates that are oriented in opposite directions. <coughs> and the way that we have, that life has evolved to solve this problem during elongation is by DNA polymerase having kind of two methods of synthesis on the different strands of DNA, which it's replicating. So this strand on the top here, the template DNA strand is oriented three prime to five prime. And DNA synthesis, as we just said, occurs five prime to three prime. DNA polymerase is able to read the template strand and add nucleotides to the three prime growing end of this new piece of DNA in green in a continuous fashion. It will continue to add nucleotides in the three prime direction, making one long, nice, continuous strand that extends towards this replication fork here. And this strand is generally referred to as the leading strand because synthesis happens continuously and therefore happens a bit faster on the leading strand than it does on the strand on the bottom, which is referred to as the lagging strand. The lagging strand lags behind the leading strand. And that's because it's the synthesis of DNA on the lagging strand is not continuous. It happens in small increments, it's discontinuous, and the DNA is made in short stretches or pieces a little bit at a time. And you can actually see here, 
two of those short pieces or short segments, which are referred to as Okazaki fragments. And those Okazaki fragments are named so because they were discovered by a scientist named Okazaki. And so the reason that DNA synthesis is discontinuous on the bottom strand is if we look at the template strand of DNA here, we can see that it's oriented five prime to three prime. And that means that DNA synthesis will be occurring away from the replication fork in the left-hand direction. DNA polymerase will be able to add nucleotides to this existing primer to the three prime end, right? And create a new strand of DNA in that way. Then as helicase continues to unwind that replication fork further, another primer can be added, and then that primer can be extended by DNA polymerase until it reaches that previous Okazaki fragment. But what we notice here is that now we sort of have to wait on DNA helicase to continue opening up and unwinding that DNA before another Okazaki fragment can be generated. And that means that that's the synthesis on that lagging strand is going to take a lot longer and is also going to generate multiple pieces or fragments as compared to synthesis on the leading strand, which is faster and continuous and generates one long piece of DNA. And so you can actually see that illustrated here in this video. You have the leading strand on the top. DNA polymerase is able to easily add nucleotides continuously to one primer and move towards the replication fork. Whereas on the bottom, we can see one Okazaki fragment was just generated. Here's an RNA primer being added. DNA polymerase comes in, extends that primer in a five prime to three prime direction, reaches the previous Okazaki fragment, and now those two Okazaki fragments can be sealed together. And another one would be synthesized here as helicase continues to unwind that DNA. In addition to just synthesizing DNA, DNA polymerase has some additional functions that it does or performs during elongation. And one of those is a proofreading function or a proofreading activity. And so what DNA polymerase is able to do is it's able to recognize any incorrectly paired bases and then it's able to remove them and then correct its mistake. So here you can see that DNA polymerase has read the template. It says C, but it has incorrectly put an A there rather than a T. And so it's able to kind of stop, recognize that mistake, and remove that nucleotide. And this removal or cutting out of a piece or nucleotide of DNA is referred to as exonuclease activity. And so polymerase is able to excise or remove that incorrect base and then put the corresponding correct base in its place. And so this is how DNA replication can have so few errors. It's because the enzyme that's actually adding nucleotides to an, um, and extending the pieces of DNA, DNA polymerase, not only has that function, but it also has this proofreading function as well, and it can correct any of its own errors. And so finally, during elongation, after DNA polymerase has removed um, any incorrect bases, it can also go back and remove any RNA primers that exist on the lagging strand. So those RNA primers are replaced with DNA. And then those Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand are sealed together by an enzyme called DNA ligase. Right? And so on the leading strand, none of this is really necessary. But on the lagging strand, all of those individual primers for every individual Okazaki fragment that were made of RNA need to be cut out and replaced with DNA. And then all those Okazaki fragments need to be connected to make one long, nice piece. And that is DNA ligase's function. And so here you can see the full process of replication laid out in 2D. And then I've also included a video that actually explains all of the process of DNA replication really well. So I highly recommend that you check that out as well.